but I want to do what is loving and caring. Mission of a spiritual life. But I wasn't prepared I think it was also a simplicity about, I I if you take away the spiritual value of it, just saying he knows about this the nuns uh, wear these strange clothes. is a uniform, yeah. everyday kind of, yeah. a, of a situation. Okay. And Trendy it, is important to, to somebody. Now you have a sense that you belong you know, to a certain group much more simple society. Uh, style. I think they yes. saw us as somebody who represented uh, the church, represented um, dress some kind of moral values. Uh, when you no longer wear that habit, I believe that who are you and what are you, that's how are you acting? That's to people. Set Apart is a series about experiencing the habit as woman religious. Brought to you by Sister Story, an organization aimed at broadening awareness of Catholic sisters. And sponsored by the Conrad Hilton Foundation. You're listening to the episode Long Trips with the Mule. Featuring Sister Agatha Grossman, a woman who believes in community action and taking care of the earth and thy neighbor. A sister of St. Joseph of Crondelet in St. Paul, Minnesota. She was born into a Catholic family and has been a sister for 68 years. She will discuss her role as a sister before and after she wore the habit. Work was in the beginning, you know, was uh, be a group that would show the love of God. Uh, it was a little design, they called it. And the persons um, would be people who would not want to do anything for themselves, but for fully absorbed in, in, in the work of, of God. At that point, that's the way they said it. And all for God, and the dear neighbor was our quote, you know, nothing for, them, for themselves. That was the, the main thing that the... It was a, a Jesuit priest who started our group to carry on, again, the, the love of God, love of neighbor, um, love of earth, and a, a community that cares for its, you know, for each other. It's still current. I mean, there's the, the uh, church or the world still needs people who are working together to, to, to take care of the earth, to take care of their neighbors to work at it as a group. You have to be up to date, I think. Because right. that our habit was what the the widows wore at the time we started. Black with the, you know something covering their head. Yeah. Just kind of changed, you know, because they wore veils over their, their heads. And sort of like what the Muslim, Muslim women do now, you know. Yeah. But we didn't cover our faces, but we had everything covered except our face. You know? mm. That was the only thing that we showed. We never, never had our faces. And then we had a modified habit for a few years. And we had, <coughs> could wear dark colors, and, and but you had to have a veil for a few more years until about 1971 or so. And then, then everybody was without veils. Everybody, but if they wanted to wear a veil, they could. We still have a couple that still wear a veil. But, No. We were in the nurse at six six months, and then we then we received the habit if the, our superiors thought that it was okay for us to go on, and we all looked forward to it a lot, and we couldn't hardly wait till we got the habit, and and we always thought that our habit was the, <laughs> was the best of anybody's, you know. <laughs> and the life we lived at that time, uh, it was it was okay because we. What, our work was all inside. We worked either as school teachers or as nurses or some, you know, some type of health profession in hospitals. Most of us were either teachers or nurses. And our habit was black, but as a nurse, we both, we uh, wore white. Well, the impact always was that people deferred to you, and you know. Um, and greeted you on the street, and the adults did anyway, and those that knew us, but, and they would always open the door for you, and everybody deferred, you know, to the sisters, mm -hmm. to the dear sisters. <laughs> we were very eager to, to change, because by that time, um, we realized that, you know, you could be a religious sister and not wear all this strange stuff, because Kids would say, Mommy, what's that? You know, not who is that, but what is that? What is it? Like we were treated as a, you know, an impersonal thing. 
people didn't, um, they, you know, they, they were always good to you, you know, and, you know, deferring, but, um, which we didn't like either, you know. We wanted kids who, there were some kids in there, and, and they said, they put their point at me and said, Mommy, what's that? Mommy, what's that? Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, this is it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And also by that time it was a matter of sanitation because, you know, you had those long skirts and they'd pick up a lot of dirt and stuff, you know, and then you had your long sleeves. And uh, as a nurse, you know, you, we had to roll up our sleeves and pin them, you know, and then we had the long rosary um, with a um, cincture, you know, that was rope, uh, kind of a rope that you put around your waist and tied it, you know, and that, that was real long. So sometimes it got caught on streetcars and stuff, you know, and people, one of our sisters at the time was dragged. Okay, she didn't get killed. Yeah, it was a, it was a, kind of a shock. <laughs> I mean, we couldn't, we wanted to, but then, you, you know, we had a couple of the sisters did it first, you know, just to, to kind of get used to the idea instead of everybody changing at once. And, um, you know, some people hardly knew who they were, you know, because all they saw was the, the face and no hair, you know. We were anxious to, to do it after we saw, you know, the first ones do it. Some sisters didn't change right away, like probably a year or two, some even waited longer. It didn't, you know, you didn't have to, but uh, so it was good that it was a choice. Well, it, well, we know how to dress, you know, and some sisters, uh, you know, were big, and they uh, they could cover up a lot. <laughs> the habit. <laughs> <laughs> they all wore long clothes and, and a veil, you know, but there were variations, and and we we liked our habit. We thought it was. So we had the cross, and then it had white all around your face, and then this was, this was stiff. You see that crease up there? That was because it was folded. You know, you can't tell the rest of it. But, uh, we had to make our own habits in the Nagashit, and then afterwards, if you could beg somebody to make it for you, there was a <laughs> you, you mean you sewed it? Yeah, we had to sew it really? ourselves, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the veil, we had to hem it, you know, and you had to roll hem it. Oh yeah. And that was that was difficult. Oh, some yeah. of us, some of us, were got pretty good at it, so we'd do it for everybody, you know, uh, people. Yeah. Well, it it uh, reflected the the way that women dressed in the 18th century, and it was it was the way the widow dressed, not other people, because it was widows wore black or dark colors in those days. So that's what that's what our habit was based on. Actually, it was not. We were not started to be, uh, you know, cloistered or to be, you know, other than be with the people. But then the church changed over the years, and because uh, when they were first, when they were first um, starting, they dressed like the widows, as I said, in dark clothes. Actually, we went back to what we were in the beginning. We wore what the widows wore. No, the widows wore anything, you know. They don't dress showy, but they wear, you know, what's available and economical. Oh, best like the dog. It always looked nice. The material you had, you know, a serge was never, it didn't get wrinkled, you know. The veil was, the veil got wrinkled because you, you sat on it, <laughs> sat on it most of the day if you were studying. And you didn't, you didn't have to worry about having your hair, you know, cut or fixed or because you looked forward to getting it and then when you when you got it you were happy but over the years then we realized that you know that it really was not uh, uh, something that we wanted to be to, to, to continue doing because it didn't fit into the type of work we were doing anymore just as an as an example um, can you imagine wearing the habit Sitting on, this was when I was working in Peru in the mountains. We went on long trips with a mule. And uh, so we had to wear, we had put everything in saddlebags and 
it was made for the 18th, 19th century, yeah. and, and you stood out. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. if you walk down the street, everybody used to use, could see you coming, and they, oh, they're the nuns. Well, I choose to wear slacks most of the time. In fact, I don't have a dress anymore. I wear slacks and a blouse, and then I can change, you know, interchange them. And then for Sundays, you have something, maybe a uh, jacket, you know, pants and jacket, blouse. Something that looks better for Sunday, or for, you know, if you're going to go to a meeting or something. <laughs> we all wear different clothes, you know, and yesterday, if something funny happened yesterday, I was sitting in chapel for Mass, and, and another sister walked in, and she sat down. And she, we had the exact same blouse on. <laughs> we started giggling, you know. <laughs> we thought it was a good joke. So that's how far it's gone, you know, different it is now. So if you're going to go out someplace fancy, you might have your Sunday habit on or something, but it was the same. So usually you put it on in the morning. We got up at early. We got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, put it on, and you kept it on all day. Um, until 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night, we went to bed. Then you hung it up, aired it out, and the black serge. We'd, we'd wear the same one all week. Two weeks, three, different, got dirty, you know. But we had a different one for Sunday. Well, we had, um, we had one that you wore during the week. I mean, you might have an extra one, you know. But usually you had one for, for, uh, Weekdays, you know, and then you had a maybe a new one, that, a better one for Sunday. And, then you had to and wash usually the you had a veil Sunday. too, a different veil for Sunday. We washed the habit, but you you had to be washed and um, well, we washed them ourselves. And usually we had to take this the skirt. The skirt was shirred, you know, with thread all along, like a gathered skirt, you know. Oh, but yeah. it was shirred so that it didn't come apart. Mm-hmm. And if you're if you're really going to wash it, you many had to take that out. I didn't always, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But for when we were in nursing, we wore a white habit, and then we just they threw them in the wash, and they just ironed them in the laundry. But we had to use them, you know. Actually, we should we should have probably used a clean one every day, you know. But we didn't pay too much attention to germs all the time back then, because <laughs> it would have been too much for the laundry. Because they were they were hard to, to iron, a lot of material and you know gathers around the waist and pleats on the top right. and. Were you in Minnesota back then? Was I in Minnesota? When you wear the habit? Yes, Minnesota and North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Mostly so North Dakota. When the season changed, like we, the weather changed, do you need to like, change anything? Well, we had, um, the habit was heavy. Uh, in the novitiate, we didn't have any change. I mean, it was just the weeks wore the same, same weight all the time. But if you're in a different climate, you know, a warmer climate, then they, they would get a light black material and make a habit out of that so that you'd have a lighter weight. And then when I went to Peru, it was warm, you know, even when we weren't on duty. But if we went out on the, in the street, you know, downtown or anything, we always wore a black habit. We had change. And if you were going to go, go out and then come back in, it change into the black, and then you'd have to go back to white again if you were going to take care of patients. Black would be heavier, yeah, yeah. and warmer. Mm-hmm. But we did have different weights after. Well, that was towards in maybe 1960s, you know, 50s. But in the, um, I don't think they had different weights when they, you know, like in France and when they came over here. It was all it was serge. It was black serge. And that was it. We wore it all the time. I don't know if it would be symbolic of the, of the vows. I think it was more symbolic of the vow of chastity. <laughs> we were all covered up. <laughs> and probably, you didn't have poverty, probably. 
uh, symbolic of obedience, only in the way that uh, you, were, you were all one community, you know, and we had superiors in those days. So we did have somebody telling us what to do a lot. Thank you for listening to Set Apart, a series about experiencing the habit as woman religious. Brought to you by Sister Story. Special thanks to the Conrad Hilton Foundation for their support. Interviews were conducted by Brianna Berner, Tran Yijon, and Alexa White. Music is from Free Music Archive. This series has been produced by me, Lily Jacobson, with additional support and guidance provided by Garrett Tiedemann and Alicia Bayer. Please connect with us at sisterstory.org. Check out our video content on Vimeo and YouTube. Like us on Facebook and follow Sister Story on Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Planning any events for National Catholic Sisters Week, March 8th through 14th? Connect with us at nationalcatholicsistersweek.org and submit your events for post and promotion. We look forward to hearing from you soon.